Welcome back to Engineer, the only dwarf with a degree in express mailing bugs back to their maker. The epicenter of this class is obviously the sentry, but you need to arm yourself to back up your backup. Your weapons may seem run of the mill, but tucked behind every corner is a quirk that makes them stand out. <laughs> So let's get into it and modify these organ emulsifiers. Starting with the Warthog Auto 210, we have a perfect opportunity to mention one of these lesser known features. Any pellet fired from this shotgun has a 10% chance to stun its prey if it hits a weak point. Since you fire 8 pellets by default, you have a decent chance of concussing anything you give buckshot based oral surgery. I can guarantee most of the player base didn't know this was a thing, but now you do, and that's perfect since we're going to improve this with our first overclock. Stunner spreads the magic of our brain busting ballistics by making the stun chance apply to any part of the body. Now you don't have to remove the tonsils of your target to give them a headache. You can just fill them with holes the normal way. And they won't have the will to fight back. Whoa, 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 don't start blasting battles yet. I haven't told you the best part. Since your victims now crave death, and it doesn't make sense to have increased stun chance when your target is already stunned, this overclock makes your shoddy deal extra damage to anything that's seen stars. Maybe you should add the minor adjustments mod to the mix to add insult to their many injuries. Speaking of dishing out dermis dilators more faster, Lightweight Magazines does exactly that. With less weight to carry around, your max ammo is increased and swapping out magazines takes less time. Between that and your sentry, I mourn the souls who dare think there will be a stop to your onslaught. Magnetic pellet alignment may lack its predecessor's finesse, but it can still deliver cranium deconstructors with great efficiency. Stuffing our shells with magnetized munitions may not have been the best idea. Your shells have a tendency to get stuck to the walls of your weapon when racking another round and your rate of fire suffers from it. The good news is, once these babies are airborne, your pellets will be pulled towards each other, thus tightening your spread. Additionally, once these projectiles enter the gray matter of their target, they have no difficulty reuniting, carving tunnels through the soft brain tissue of your enemies, translating to increased weak point damage. Sorry to short you on the balance, but the Warthog only has 5 overclocks in total and I'd much prefer having 2 unstables. Cycle Overload starts this category by optimizing the rate you rack shells. This gives your shotgun double the fire rate and somehow makes your pellets fly with a little more malice, thus increasing your damage. Though this acceleration of lead marbles causes them to soar a bit more haphazardly, increasing your spread radius and decreasing your ability to snipe. Also, this adjustment to the mechanisms makes loading your weapon take a little longer since they haven't been properly optimized for the speed of combat. Finishing off the Warthog, we have mini shells. You replace your normal sized munitions with shells of the same gauge but are half the size. Which are real, by the way! I can't find a stock image of mini shotgun shells, so here. Whoop. They look like that. Naturally, cutting your shells in half will grant you all of the benefits of having 50% less volume to deal with. Your mag size doubled. Your recoil halved. Your ammo doubled. Uh, almost. And the best part is, the downsides don't follow this pattern. Your damage is only reduced by 2 compared to the weapon's base damage of 7. Unfortunately, packing only half the powder in your rounds reduces their force enough to remove your stun chance. And also set your stun duration to 0? What? Eh, it's not the end of the world. With how dramatic the positives are, you can equip any configuration of modifications and still have a great time. Like turning your shotgun into an armor-eating machine gun that saws through enemies, or maxing out your ammo count while equipping turret whip to encourage your sentry to perform better. I'll teach you a lesson about efficiency, you little shit. The Stubby Voltaic SMG may get a neutral reaction out of you, but you may find its secrets rather shocking. It electrocutes things. Without adjustments, each bullet you fire has a 25% chance to trigger the electrocution status effect. It also has some armor break tacked on there, but that's not going to actively affect half of our overclocks, so we don't care. Super Slim Rounds puts your bullets on a diet, allowing you to cram an extra few in your magazine. Since these tiny terminators are more aerodynamic, this also decreases your spread, perfect for drilling through exoskeletons and mulchifying fleshy bits with your passive armor break. God damn it. Well-oiled machine, uh, oils your machine. Well. With a hearty helping of grease in your gears, all the bits and bobs of your stubby can slide against each other with- THAT DOES NOT SOUND GOOD! Uh, friction, it's not there. Fire rate and reload time are more gooder. Alright, we're gonna talk about the electricity now. EM Refire Booster charges your bullets with even more electricity. You'd think this would increase your chance to zap your targets, which it does, just not in the way you're expecting. This energy recycling grants your SMG plus 2 electric damage. This damage type causes the electrocuted status effect, but it's independent from your passive chance to electrocute something. Although the chances to taste something are separate, the status effect is the same, so you can take this opportunity to equip non-electrical modifications and still inflict static on your foes. This overclock increases your fire rate as well, guaranteeing electricity in a timely manner. Just make sure you're close enough to land your shots since your spread is wider. 
The next one is a little counterintuitive. Lightweight rounds replaces the metal of your bullets with something a bit less dense to lighten your load. Naturally, you're going to take this lack of chronic back pain as a sign to carry even more ammo. You'd think bringing more bullets would also merit a fire rate increase to distribute them efficiently, but these frail rounds physically can't handle the loading mechanism of your SMG. To prevent your rounds from shattering inside your weapon, your rate of fire is tragically decreased. Additionally, using such fragile rounds results in less damage being dished out. At least you have a whole lot of them to make up for it. Alright, it's time to get into my favorite overclocks for the stubby, the Unstables. Why am I calling exaggerated attention to these overclocks specifically? Because the positives of these two only apply when you taste turrets. Notice how I didn't specify yours. If you want to squad up with your fellow engineers, you can abuse their turrets as well as your own for maximum static action. I can't really tell if this is optimal, or what's going on past the perimeter for that matter, but I think we're winning. This is certainly my team comp for Has5 salvage missions. Before we actually use these overclocks, I'd advise equipping upgraded capacitors to increase your chance of triggering these overclocks, improved gas system to increase how quickly the chance comes, and conductive bullets to make anything affected by your electricity receive additional damage from your SMG. Anyway, let's actually talk about the overclocks in question, starting with Turret Arc. Now, a few of you have told me that Turret Arc is... <clears throat> poopy bad. And to that I say, I don't care! I think this overclock is awesome, and I firmly believe someone should be running it when you're four stacking the Red Ranger. You present me a single lightning fence, and I raise you six sentry guns and an epilepsy warning. Who's having fun now? Oh, right, I was supposed to be telling you guys what it actually does. At the cost of max ammo and fire rate, you can divert your stream of bullets into the side of a sentry to charge them with electricity. This electrifying development triggers based on your weapon's electrocution chance. While greased with lightning, your turrets emit a field of electricity that tases anything that gets too close. This includes yourself, so in order to keep your amount of Lichtenbohr figures to a minimum, I'd recommend reloading your sentry after the charge is depleted. What doesn't apply to you is an 80% speed reduction imparted on any bugs that try to touch your turret. No? Are you not convinced? Well, that's when I deploy another Gemini turret or assault one of my friend's precious masterpieces to create a literal electric fence. If two turrets are within 15 meters of each other while charged, the damage area of the lightning field will extend out to connect the sentries. Suddenly, your defenses have gone from trivial to ironclad. This effect can also be daisy-chained between turrets and last 20 seconds before you need to refresh it. Go with that with some questionable turret placements, the slow the lightning applies, and a friendly reminder that our fence posts are GUNS! And you'll be trapping enemies in a static spider web surrounded by automated machine guns. Now, my immense love for turret arc is not to discredit any other overclocks. In fact, if you're running this team composition, I'm expecting half the dwarves to be using the next one, turret EM discharge. Right off the bat, this overclock follows the same rule of triggering based on electrocution chance. Though instead of powering up your turret, it bursts in a shockingly large area around it. If you couldn't tell by the theme of this weapon or the pun I so expertly placed, this sphere of energy does electric damage as well, just a lot more. The damage decreases if your victim is outside the 3 meter radius and they have a chance to become terrified of your exploding sentry. The fear is mildly misplaced since you're only able to trigger this effect every second and a half per century. Actually, that fear is working against them since once they turn around, they'll be right back in the kill radius and your sentry will be ready for another burst. Just keep track of this overclock's decreased mag size and remember that your bullets will be doing less damage than usual. <laughs> Lastly, we have the Lock-On Smart Rifle. Ha! I said it right this time. Unlike the other two weapons, this one's secret isn't a secret at all. Ignoring that stubby says Voltaic in the name, it is not as obvious as the Lock-On's abilities. If you don't know what the Smart Rifle does, then you either haven't played the game since it was added, or are in the part of my audience that doesn't play the game. Shout out to you guys, by the way, your existence proves that I'm doing something right. Anyway, the specialty of the lock-on is that instead of firing continuously, it targets anything you are looking at. Releasing the trigger causes a barrage to be unleashed in the exact order the marks were made in. Additionally, this rifle has armor break, so if your bullets decide to curve into the hardened carapace of a Praetorium, they will bore a hole through its armor as well as its organs. It's important to note that if something strays too far away from the center of your screen, you will lose a lock on it. And if you don't want to use this mechanic or you are fighting some feisty loot bugs, you can tap fire to treat it like a normal rifle. With that out of the way, let's talk about the lock-ons overclocks. Starting with a razor, we are fiddling with the targeting system. Specifically, we're increasing the amount of targets you can have tagged at any given moment. This amount is a multiplier, so you can stack it with the aperture extension modification. A racer also increases your magazine size by 12, so you can unleash more volleys before reloading. Since this overclock doesn't have any weird semantics about reaching max lock count or needs you to deal less damage to deal more damage, we'll use this chance to equip electric generator mod and electrochemical rounds. If you shoot at something with three or more marks on them, electric generator mod will shock the target in question. This is worth mentioning because electrochemical rounds immediately follows it up with increased damage against electrified, or on fire, enemies. 
Armor Break module takes a different approach to the lock-on. Instead of tampering with your targeting, your bullets get extra spicy when you hit your lock cap. The base damage of your ballistics isn't changed, but each round heads towards their target with a little more purpose, causing them to jackhammer through armor with great efficiency. Another adjuster of ammunition is explosive chemical rounds. Targeting an enemy with three or more bullets will cause the last one in that portion of your barrage to explode on impact. Yes, this means your bullet can burst if something gets in its way. The explosion itself deals damage in a 4 meter radius and has a chance to cause fear. Since the blast doesn't occur if your target dies too fast, it'd be in your best interest to reduce your damage a little. Luckily, this overclock takes the initiative and reduces it for you. It also reduces your max ammo, but such is the price of grenade bullets. Seeker Rounds isn't limited by the laws of obstacles like ECR was, or any other instance of the Smart Rifle for that matter. Instead of being blocked by armor, walls, or enemies trying to expedite their expiration date, your rounds phase through them, ensuring that they will hit their target despite this weapon being entirely based around not missing. Additionally, this overclock increases how far away a creature must wander from the center of your screen before leaving the range of your sensor. This increase is multiplicative, so it can stack with a CCD array add-on modification for a stupidly high lose lock threshold. Unfortunately, all the added systems we crammed into your weapon do hinder some of its more basic functions. Your magazines tend to get jammed a little for an increased reload time, and your burst fire rate has been reduced in an attempt to prevent you from rattling apart R&D's shoddy soldering. We are part of a multi-bajillion dollar spacefaring mining corporation. You think we can afford parts that actually work? Of course not! But taping together the ones that kinda work is the whole point of overclocks, especially with the unstables. Speaking of, the first one for the lock-on is Executioner. This overclock earns its unnerving title by dealing bonus weak point damage when you reach your target cap. That doesn't seem too fantastic until you realize that your targeting time is halved, and one of the quote-unquote negatives of this overclock is that your max target count is decreased. This means you're reaching full lock faster and dealing more damage because of it. But we can make things worse. For them, not for you. Opening our modification list, we can equip Shutter Speed Sensor to increase your targeting speed even further. On top of that, we can add Unstable Lock Mechanism, which boosts your damage at full lock similar to the Overclock's crit bonus. With this lethal combination, you'll select all and delete any hordes in your way. Uh, you do have minus 12 to both your mag size and ammo capacity, but this overclock has been about teleporting your entire ammo belt into the enemies as quickly as possible, so you already came into this expecting to reload. Lastly, we have... Uh... I don't know how to classify this one. A... Support overclock? I know, right? Ghostship, how dare you assume I'm going to perform teamwork in this cooperative game? I ignore that, it's contrary to my narrative. At the cost of a much longer lock time, Neural Lasso uses 5G waves to hamper the movement of anything you're targeting. This effect stacks with diminishing returns, capping at 10 with a 65% movement speed reduction. Yes, you can still have more than 10 locks on a single target if you want. Since slowing large enemies while your inebriated co-workers disassemble their exoskeletons is kinda depressing, your locks will expire after 5 seconds. But do not fret, my slightly disgruntled friend, for your psychokinesis is still attached to a lead-based face reconstructor. And there you had this guy! Every primary engineer overclock has a critical corruption. All these guns can clear caves one way or another. And if that don't work, use more gun. So press the buttons that keep the content coming, join my Discord using the link below, and I'll see you when the fallout settles.